Hey everyone, Hamza Yousaf finally did everyone a favour this week and decided to resign as Scottish First Minister, and two notable things stand out. Number one, his long list of achievements is actually just a single bullet point of not being arrested like the last one. And two, the only people lamenting him stepping down are those in the unionist side of the aisle who will be forever grateful for him personally killing the independence movement for a generation or two. I'm not sure what he's planning to do next, although his brother's currently facing charges of drug dealing, so there's probably a job going spare in the gang if he wants to switch careers. It would certainly be entertaining to see him take a profitable drug empire and incompetently run it into the ground with mounting financial losses year after year. The question of what he'll do next is a legitimately interesting one though. Most failed politicians are at least liked by some portion of the electorate and have enough contacts and career experience to pursue something in the private sector, yet he is none of that. He's too young to be offered a seat in a board of directors and no serious business would want to be associated with him anyway. You're more likely to see Bupa hiring Lucy Letby as a spokesperson. In addition, Hamza doesn't have any long-term clout or reputation to cash in on. Say what you will about Nicola Sturgeon, if she avoids prison, she will very quickly pick up some kind of quite well-paying academic position overseas, talking about her 20 or so years experience at the top of the tree. Even Gordon Brown, for all his faults, was still respected enough to front charity work and talk about his 10 years plus as Chancellor. Things don't look as rosy for Hamza, and certainly his chances of getting a decent job aren't helped by the Scottish job market imploding due to his own policies of raising taxes and forcing businesses to move south of the border. Is at this point I should probably add a personal note, which is that I went to the same school as him, and from what I can tell from Wikipedia, I must have been in the year above him, and yet I'd never heard of him until about two or three years ago. I don't remember him from any prize givings or chess club or the like. He seems like the sort of middling person who got okayish grades, and whilst others went on to pursue high-flying careers, he opportunistically spotted that a lot of nationalist politicians were quite keen to insist that they weren't racist, despite it being a key component of the SNP's manifesto at the time. It's equivalent of a bloke in a pub saying one of his best friends is an ethnic minority, so he can't possibly be a bigot, despite being actively lifted out of pub by the police for shouting racial obscenities. Come to think of it, that bloke may well even have been Alex Salmond. He's done far crazier things in his drunken adventures over the years, as anyone who's seen him stumbling around on an East Coast train will testify. Although I guess Bampshire to London is a 10-hour train ride and a drinks trolley's on expenses. Anyway, back to the story. Needless to say, Hamza leaves with a depressingly large pension that few of us will ever attain, although we can't claim any of it for several decades and will presumably have to do something in the meantime to make ends meet. Perhaps he could become a social media star, start a YouTube or TikTok channel, and maybe do one of those unboxing videos where he empties a ballot box and realises all the content or votes for the Labour Party candidate rather than him. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.